And I don't want to talk to somebody that can't answer questions. Because I ask them. Anybody that I've talked to, I've asked them. I ask the questions. I ask the pertinent questions. I don't ask them that bullshit. I don't give a fuck what you like until you get all my questions answered. We can do all that little small talk at the end. Let's get the business at hand out first. What you going to do with this town? What you going to do with this county? What you going to do with this state? That's what I talk about. And that's why the Ipsy motherfuckers didn't want to fucking fuck with me. I don't give a fuck. You should have fucked with me and kept my dumb ass quiet. See, you took the interview. I wouldn't be talking about your goofy ass today, nigga. But since you didn't take the interview, you're going to catch this smoke today and the next day that I really ain't got shit to talk about. Because that's the only reason I'm getting in that ass today. Because I ain't got shit else to talk about. We can talk about Tamika Mallory. I mean, she done really fucked up. Tamika really done fucked up. Because there's a lot of black people out there that was counting on her to be real. They was counting on her to be real. I already said, I made the mistake early on. Digging into her. Thinking like. Damn, she might really be for us. Yeah, you're talking that real shit. But I didn't know her backstory. Now that I know her backstory, I don't give a fuck about her story. Because she's not making her story. She's making coonery. How about that? Because now, with Tamika, now, she here. See, that's her, that's her model now. That's her model. That's, that's Tamika's model. Let me run it again. That's what she did. Tamika came up with Reverend Al. Reverend Al and her strategically had it set. The more comfortable you get out here with the people and you get out here in these villages, I'm going to kick back. I'm going to kick back. You keep coming forward. I'm going to kick back. Before long, you're going to be standing right next to me. And then one day, I'm going to say, Miss Tamika Mallory, and you light that ass up with one of them poems. You light that ass up with that fiery spirit. Hell, just light that ass up. You strong. You black. You a woman. And you got a story. Her baby daddy got killed in the game back in the day. So she had a story. But she left out the part about her mama and daddy starting Al uh, Sharpton's network with him. Absolutely. They started Nan with Al, Al Sharpton. So she really grew up around Al Sharpton. Most motherfuckers would be like, oh, she's been, she been an activist for 25 years. Nigga, she's only 40. Oh, she started being an activist at 15? Okay. See, here's the thing. This is what I'm going to start doing, because this is that false propaganda that niggas like to hear. So, you know what? I, I'm 51. I'm 51. I started activism 36 years ago. I started being an activist 36 years ago. How about that? Did nobody know that? Y'all didn't think y'all didn't know that? How about this? So... Back in the day, the KKK used to come through town. They used to ride right up Fifth Ave, you know? Had a shit on, some had a shit on, some wouldn't. Skinheads, whatever it was. 1985. 1985. We used to stand off to the side and throw D batteries at them motherfuckers, man. Most of the times that I went uptown, I was with other white people. I wasn't even with black people. Couple times I went, I was with some black folks. But most of the time I was up there, I was with white people that wasn't for the shits. Y'all know I got a dichotomous life. Went to Burns Park. Went to Mitchell. So I had two different types of friends. Friends that I still fuck with today. On both sides. So the people that I went to Burns Park with and ended up going to tap in and pioneer, we would be up there throwing batteries at the racist, at the bigots, 
at the skinheads, at the neo-Nazis. We got a little older and got our weight kind of like really up. We started fighting them. Wasn't real big. All you got to do is knock one of them down. They got to scurrying. But see, they had a permit every year to fucking come through town. And then they start getting that ass beat. They stopped getting that permit. The skinheads and KKK didn't just tire. See, if we was one of their stops where they wasn't going to catch a lot of flack, they'd have kept coming through this bitch. But they started to catch too much flack. And by the 90s, the early 90s, nah, we really wasn't having that. Motherfuckers was wearing X hats and African medallions and kufis and shit. We wasn't having that. Listening to way too much P.E. and drinking O.E. We wasn't having it. So they stopped coming. But in 1985, I guess I jumped into activism. So I've been an activist for 36 years. In 1987, we helped save the arch from being filled in at uh, Ann Arbor here on high school. That was political. That was in the newspaper. I was a political activist in 1987. But y'all don't see me out in the streets touting that shit. Because none of that shit really matters. Yeah, I might have helped move the needle then. Throwing them D batteries every year and, and knocking a motherfucker down every, every now and then. That helped stop that bullshit. Us sitting in the arch and eating lunch in the arch and protesting in the arch and needing mega... I didn't need a megaphone, but a lot of motherfuckers had megaphones. That kept them from closing the arch until we graduated. And then there was no more political activism. Because after that 90 class, I don't know what happened. 88 was the strongest class. 89 diluted, 90 off the rails. 91 on back. Come on, man. There was no activism. They wasn't doing nothing out there but worrying about their high tops, worrying about their print shirts and shit. Nah, nah. I'm good. I'm good. So they closed the arch. And then as far as activism, I mean, motherfuckers, I done gave money to, gave food to, did all kinds of shit for, for activism. But I don't be out here, uh, I did this and I did this. But see, Tamika Mallory did that. Every time she got up to the mic, I've been in activism for 25 years. I've been in activism since I was 15. I've been in, she got it embedded in our spirit. And like, she's been around for a long time. Who gives a fuck? What are you doing now? See, what they tell us is all the shit that they used to do. And then what they do now is what really matters. Her doing this Cadillac commercial, that's damaging to the black collective. Her being on the Grammys, that was damaging to the black collective. Damaging. I'm trying to tell you, man. You can't do shit like that and say you out here for everybody. For one, a lot of the people you supposedly advocating for, they don't fuck with little baby, dub baby, whoever's baby. I don't know what other performance was. So they probably weren't even watching that shit and they weren't watching the Grammys. Grammys ain't been for us for a minute. Ain't never ain't never been for us. We just come take that bitch over because we won all the awards because we make the best music, whatever. And then this Cadillac commercial... This Cadillac commercial is so it's so problematic because they had a thing called the audacity of blackness. It wasn't the audacity of black men. It was the audacity of blackness. Go back and look at your shits. This shit wasn't new. This shit been out before. It was the audacity of blackness. So they had black men and black women in it. Yeah. They had black men and black women. I think Spike Lee was in it, Regina King, a couple people. A couple people we know. They was in it. So, they was in it. But this one here is the audacity of black women. Now, I don't have a problem with it being the audacity of black women. But Tamika Mallory... 
She's made her bones off the brutality and murder of black men and black women. But where Tamika Mallory really got her bones was black men being killed by police, being unjustifiably murdered by others. And she came out and she did protest. And where the world really lifted her up was this Breonna Taylor thing. That's black women. I haven't confirmed yet, but I don't believe Breonna Taylor's mama is in the Cadillac commercial. I don't believe Trayvon Martin's mama is in the Cadillac commercial. I don't believe Tamir Rice's mama is in the Cadillac commercial. I don't believe Philando Castile's mama is in the Cadillac commercial. I don't believe Eric Garner's mama is in the Cadillac commercial. I don't believe Alton Sterling's mama is in the Cadillac commercial. I don't believe Terrence Crusher's mama is in the Cadillac commercial. Walter Scott's mama ain't in the Cadillac commercial. Armand Arbery's mama ain't in the Cadillac commercial. Rayshard Brooks' mama ain't in the Cadillac commercial. How come, Tamika? It's the audacity of black women. How come you ain't got them black mothers who had their babies stolen away? I don't believe David Harris's mama is in the is in the commercial. Excuse me for getting that name. Rakia Boyd, Ayanna Taylor. I don't believe none of their mamas is in that Cadillac commercial. See, that's where I got a problem. I got a problem with Tamika and I got a problem with General Motors. I ain't got a problem with Cadillac. Cadillac is owned by General Motors. I got a problem with the motherfucker who's in power. GM's in power. Cadillac is just an employee of GM. Some of y'all ain't gonna catch this. I get it. Black people in Cadillacs. I get it. Unfortunately, though, the average black person that she's supposed to be pushing for can't afford a Cadillac. Can't even afford a CTS or ATS. They can't even afford the letters on the back of the motherfucker. She's supposed to be lobbying for the underbelly of society, which is the bottom caste, which is black Americans. Now, if you want to just throw it all over and say black people, okay. Let's not cut anybody out. Because Tamika didn't. She said it's the audacity of black women. But it didn't say black trans women. Even though she had a black trans woman in the commercial. What up, Dell? I thought Tamika said she had separated herself from Black Lives Matter. That sounds kind of Black Lives Matter-ish. I know Black Lives Matter is all about the trans life. They give money to every trans organization known to man. All that money they said they gave, 20 or something million, most of it went to trans organizations. Some black trans organizations, but trans organizations. When Tamika said the audacity of black women, how come she didn't say trans women? I mean, they showed him in the commercial, her, him. Yeah. I don't know. I'm going to get knocked for it either way. They showed them in the commercial holding a crown. Is that a king's crown or a queen's crown? They are different. So all I'm saying is, state your business up front. State your business. And if this is who you're going to be for all the way through, then be for them all the way through. Don't switch up on us. We can't take all that kind of convoluted shit as a people. We've dealt with too much over the last 401 years. We've dealt with too much. Be a straight person with us. Don't be making us do all this. That's what y'all doing out here. 
Y'all political activists. Y'all politicians. Y'all ain't right. You're not right.